Sadnam, Dhyā Gopinde here to share some of the aspects of the Kundalini Yoga technology that are in many ways uh, particular to our tradition, our lineage, uh, like for instance why we have this get-up of the turban and the white clothes. So to start, I'll speak to the eye focus, the drishti, where we give our attention and put our intention into our concentrating gaze. We have a few primary uh, eye focuses. Generally, it is the third eye, unless otherwise specified, to where the two eyes are closed and rolled in and up to the brow point and into the center of the brain, stimulating the pituitary gland, center of intuition and command. This kind of puts us into our uh, domain to have uh, control over our mind and body as we practice. Uh, next, we have the crown drishti, where we kind of go through the third eye and a little further up to the top of the skull. And this is going to be stimulating the pineal gland. Next, we have the chin. This is the known as the moon focus, where the eyes are closed and we're focusing down to the chin moon center. This is relating to our subconscious. Lastly, we use the tip of the nose as a drishti. This connects one to the core of the brain, activating it, and as well the hypothalamic frontal lobe region, where is housed the pituitary gland and pineal gland. So doing that puts pressure on that part of the brain. Um, and then lastly, just to say, sometimes we have the eyes open, even wide sometimes, really wide, focusing at a single point uh, the, to the floor in front of us or to the wall in front of us. Oh, and uh, of course, during Venus Kriyas or White Tantric Yoga, uh, we have the gift, the blessing of staring into the eyes of another, often um, someone we care about, a friend, a lover, or even our beloved, our partner. So those are the primary eye focuses, drishtis, Sanskrit word. Next, we have uh, mudras. So to start, um, we have gyan mudra, where we have the thumb tip and the index finger gently touching. The index finger is known as the Jupiter finger. This is a center of knowledge, of wisdom, of benevolence, gifts, spiritual gifts, and uh, a consecrated heart. Next, we have the middle finger. The middle finger is the Saturn finger. This relates to qualities of patience, perseverance, endurance, forbearance, discipline, and it's also an energy that tests a person relating to one's karma and personal temptations. Next, we have the ring finger mudra. This relates to the solar energy and is about vitality and radiance. Next, we have the pinky finger, which is about mercury and communication. So mudras serve to place the ego in proper relationship to truth, satnam, to the divine. And we have various mudras that we practice with. Um, but those are the qualities of the fingers there. Uh, next, I'll speak to the turban or the head cover. So wearing a turban especially helps to create a subtle resistance to the expansions and contractions of the cranium, the, the very subtle refined movements uh, that happen in the skull. Our bones, especially um, there are points in the skull that are piezoelectric, um, meaning that they generate electricity when subjected to external pressure, like from the turban. So wearing the turban helps to uh, exert that pressure. Not too much so, you just want to have a little bit gentle pressing there. Like we wrap a baby in um, when they're young, we you know, have a bundle uh, for a baby. We're not like uh, strangling them. <laughs> it's just keeping them cozy and tight, comforted and loved. So treating our head like that. Um, and this also encourages the descent of uh, the energy when it gets up to that point, it's not going to leave out of the heat 
the tapas of the head, the psychic heat that we're exerting, it's helping serve to create a closed circuit up there so that energy will then descend and ground. Speaking of, next we have a sheepskin, which you can't see what I'm sitting on right now. And so a sheepskin also serves to keep that circuit looping and to keep it um, grounding, but not grounding out, down, back to our mother earth, which is important to be grounded, walk barefoot on the earth when we need to get that medicine. But when we're practicing Kundalini yoga, uh, it serves to keep a closed circuit. We're creating an electric current, Kundalini energy, and so we don't want that to be grounded. We want to keep that current rising and not leaking. Uh, next, I'll speak to mantra, the basics. So mantra is a mind wave current or vibration. And the intentionality is already fixed in within the mantra, within that code. So there's no need for it to even be chanted out loud, but simply with the right intention and attentionality, that resonance is sent into the mind and into the, the mind body. The whole system vibrates with that power of thought um, and sound when we do resound it and reverberate it through our own energy field and through the entire field. Um, mantras can be quite profound and powerful the more that you repeat them. And so the next, um, I'll speak to Jap. So Japa is the repetition of mantra or of prayer or of any of the many divine names. So with Japa, with the repetition of mantra over time, we're creating a tapa, psychic heat, and this is serving to burn the seeds of karma. Um, and the more we practice that, for a length of time and over a period, a cycle of uh, daily practice, a sadhana, then um, you can really profoundly go deep into the subconscious and unconscious layers of consciousness. Next, I'll speak to a mala, which uh, serves to help one to keep count. Um, in yoga, we often use rudraksha seeds. These come from India, um, sacred seeds that hold a a certain medicine, just like any crystal or stone. So you can find um, medicine that would serve you during uh, this period of practice, during this point in your life. Work with that mala, use it to meditate with, gives your hands something to do, uh, helps you to keep count. And malas have 108, um, and then one extra stone, seed, or crystal um, and so 108 means, uh, adds up to nine, which is a cycle of completion. Next, uh, we wear white in our practice. Um, so any color that we use has a certain energy, uh, accords with a certain chakra, and white in particular um, expands the aura. And it better be a good aura if you're gonna expand it. And so it helps that um, you know, you do it when you're practicing, especially, but maybe not all the time when you're uh, feeling down because um, it's, it's very expansive. And so um, if you are up on your practice and in impeccable practice, then with that expanded aura and wearing white, you're truly a, a blessing wherever you go. Next, I'll speak to bandhas. So bandhas... Next, I'll speak to bandhas. Bandhas are locks or contractions, and we work with uh, three, but uh, really four actually bandhas, uh, namely uh, Mulaband root lock, Uddiyana band diaphragm lock. Javandra band neck lock, and the fourth being Maha Bandha, the great lock, which uh, employs all of those locks simultaneously. So with the root lock, we squeeze the pelvic floor, we tone the perineum, raise the sacrum, and draw the navel into the spine. And you're even invited to always keep this slight tension 
within your practice, as you practice, as you meditate. But then when you apply Mulaband, the root lock, you want to apply a slightly more of a tension, contraction, pressure there. This pressure serves to raise the Kundalini energy. Next, the diaphragm lock, Uddhyanaband, we do only on the exhale. We draw the navel in, we raise the ribs, suck the ribs in, suck in the diaphragm, lift the heart and chest, suck in the throat, and squeeze the ribs and spine. So this helps to raise the energy beyond the navel to then the heart. Next we have Chalandra Bandha, the neck lock. This here, the, uh, it's just a subtle tuck of the chin. This frees up the neck to experience flow of energy to reach its destiny, the brain, through the neck. Uh, lastly, we have the Mahaband. Again, this is the engagement of all three locks, held or applied quickly, rapidly, repetitively, like a wave. Um, we do that in some kriyas. It's, it's really quite cool. Uh, next, uh, you know, within kriyas, if you know what you practice, you'll know that we exert ourselves. And then after we exert, we rest. We pause, we meditate, we integrate. And then, of course, at the end of a class, at the end of a kriya, we have savasana, corpse pose, where we completely surrender. Often, we also surrender in child's pose. So this serves the exertion and rest, relaxation, serves to help build up the vagal tone, um, creating a resistance in the vagus nerve, a resistance to just duress, to stress, and an ability to be more responsible to respond to the stress and duress uh, that one is moving through at that point in life. Sometimes it's more, sometimes it's less. And practicing Kundalini Yoga, you're building that muscle to be able to handle and balance the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system to go and to rest. Lastly, I'll just speak uh, briefly to pranayama, breathing patterns. Um, in Kundalini Yoga, we will often work with a suspended breath often accompanied by a squeeze, a root lock. This also serves to help increase the vagal tone. It resets and expands the definition of survival, of one's limits. And at the subconscious level, it can even then increase the level of trust that one has for life and for the breath. Of course, we do many other pranayamas, breath of fire, bellows breathing, long deep breathing, uh, many different styles. But I'll just leave it at that. So those are 11 aspects of Kundalini Yoga technology. Of course, there's more to it. I'm going to have a, another video soon to talk about theory, philosophy, practical theory of this practice. Um, I'm here at a wonderful home studio of mine, Satnam Yoga Chicago. In my humble opinion, it is the premier Kundalini Yoga studio in the city, and uh, perhaps even in the Midwest. We practice and teach seven times a day sadhana all week so if you live in the city if you're ever visiting please do come see me here where i sit now um, and i hope that you'll continue to learn and practice with me through this channel sadhana thank you any comments feedback or questions are most welcome sadhana